Shuri, oh. did you hear? I heard it. Your younger sibling got turned into a fish and you have to go and rescue him. Um, not my problem. Actually, um, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yes, welcome back to another batch of uh, movie commentaries. Um, today we're doing Help, I'm a Fish. I'm sorry? Oh my um, god, I remember that title. song. I'm a real okay. yellow fish. I, I, I don't even know what the hell this thing is. So. Oh. Wow, I, I never do. I never do film titles could apologize or, for the movie. Hey, sure, sure. Yes. Or, or a fish tale, as it's also well known. Okay, fish okay. Tale, okay. Yes. Believe it or not, <laughs> a lot of what most people think when they first see this movie is, "Huh, this feels like a ripoff of Finding Nemo." Actually, no. This came out two years before Finding Nemo. This, huh. this was Three. essentially Denmark trying to get their shot at being, I kid you not, the next Lion King. Like, there was a big marketing campaign behind this movie, a big budget, and of course, songs. Songs that they were definitely aiming to get into the Grammys, the Musical Awards, or whatnot, including the hit single, Help I'm a Fish, aka Little Yellow Fish, done by, at the time, up-and-coming Danish teen band, 18. Mind you, the film company behind this is called A Film. Denmark, I'm starting to see a pattern with your naming here. And that sums up this movie, apparently. But you weren't kidding. Film. You weren't kidding with the budget. It's like eight, the equivalent to eighteen million dollars. It's not like that cheap. Oh, trust me. Back then, for a movie, especially an animated one, that was pretty dang high. And there was a lot behind this. You had at least one, two, three, four, five, six different distribution companies behind this. You had at least six production companies behind this, and you had at the time unknown up and coming star Aaron Paul who's Aaron Paul Jesse <laughs> yeah bitch from what from from Disney no 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 Jesse from Breaking Bad <laughs> in a case movie and he was also the protagonist of the King's Grave Final Fantasy 15 movie he's yeah. also taught from Bojack Horseman but so basically though you can assume that this is one of Jesse's crazy stories that he's telling Walter <laughs> Yeah, Alpine the Fist is part of the Breaking Bad class. So, Shiroi, I believe sure. you had a fun fact regarding uh, the music of this movie. Well, it only came up out of nowhere, but I actually had the cassette for this. Um, turns out Jova was also exposed to the songs from this movie. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, you could never escape the Help I'm a Fish song, which you'll be hearing except, several points in this movie, too. Except... Except if you're Portuguese, apparently, because I have, I don't know anybody who has even heard of this thing. Yes, and uh, and the hype machine worked out so well, it only made like over just over five million dollars compared to its eighteen million dollars. Oh, specifically, wow. specifically five point six million. Not even half the budget. So sadly, this movie sank down into the depths. Surely uh, to be sadly, forgotten. Sad, 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 sadly, we're not gonna get help. I'm still a fish. Please help me for fuck's sake. But that said, <laughs> but that said, we here at Squirm, we look at both the well-known and the very obscure, and we notice that a lot of our fans out there like when we talk about obscure stuff, so sure I was kind enough to dive down and raise the wreckage of this uh, masterpiece. Okay, I will be dead for these. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, this also has our good old friend from Good Time Films, Scott McNeil. Of course, I, I get the idea. That, she, she, that, she that, putting that, a... Go on. Well, there is a thing. Uh, both Dark Chronicle and Tosa Sinfonia are the highlight of his career. Basically. I disagree. The Warmer 40k games are. Uh... Um, but uh, instead, no. Did, I get the idea that they blew the budget on the main cast star power because aside from one or two roles, as like we have the information, Aaron Paul and Alan Rickman for some reason. Oh, also, Professor Snape, why jokes. are you here? <laughs> but uh, but I think we dindled enough. Uh, for the record, audience, since this movie apparently is on Amazon Prime for reasons that escape me, um, <laughs> Ghost Stories is on Amazon Prime. You can so watch it something. there, but we ask you to start before, all, sorry, start after all the logos when the proper movie is about to start with the A film, APS, and all presents. So, you know. So, all right, take us away, Shiri, please. All right. Um... 
Three, two, one, click. Hey, I think I need the audience to understand, like, because, um, you know, like a lot of people here, you know, really like obscure things. Here's the thing about my weird movie history. Growing up, my movie experiences consisted of Disney movies, knockoff Good Times movies, and really random crap like this. Sure, 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 sure. When you say knockoff good time wow, films, we don't waste that much time. Do you mean time, knockoffs yeah. of good time films? Like No, I mean like you know, the knockoff like, good yeah. times movies. Yeah, the okay. thing. Hey Shiroi. Yes. Help me, help me. I oh, need God, a remedy. Stop. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful yeah. CGI. Uh, Alan Rickman is in this movie for some reason. And also, Again, and also, guys. Yep, that's Terry right. Terry Jones. Face what is Terry Jones doing here? For those who don't know, Terry Jones is a Welsh actor who is part of Monty Python. <laughs> I don't. I, I, don't you see, Pedro? We wanted to follow the trend of having Eric Idle in bad movies, so we want to, you know, Terry Jones in another oh, one. Oh, 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 oh. This Welsh rep in this but, movie I grew up with. Fantastic. But, guys, it gets even yes, better. Tracy Dave, Brown. It gets even better, well, guys. I'm English in my case, because Alan Rickman. Yes, gets, Grover. See, and Dave, also, we started with a whale's ass. Anyway, okay. da David Bateson is also in this movie. Also, hey, Fantasia 2000. 2000. <laughs> uh, but yeah, David Bateson is also among the cast. He's a South African-born English actor, who you may remember as the voice of Agent 47. And also the voice for commercialing advertisements in Lego brands. Probably more so oh. for being Hitman Agent 47. Mm -hmm. As recently as this year, I think, even. But yeah, okay. First, honest props to this movie though the animation has aged pretty well even the cgi arguably don't get me wrong it's still early 2000 cgi but i so see is this one of those products that mixes 2d with the cgi yes yep Clearly. With... Boy. I, I can already tell i think it well works... maybe i thought it, maybe it's just a thing will be opening maybe we'll so it's kind of like titan e i guess oh boy here we go hey there's the song already Actually, let, let me check what year was Titan A, because I can imagine a lot of people might, might mistake it's this for a Don Bluth movie. Hey, Shiroi, hey, Shiro, check well, it, it out. This came out the same year as Titan A. E. Hey, Shiro, check yeah, it out. Let's go up. The hit single song <laughs> that they were definitely opting to be a big hit is also apparently a hit song in universe. Huh. It's almost like they were trying to go for the Let It Go effect. Which? Well, yeah. I think it's more like the Lego, the everything is awesome effect, because that's how it was in, like, in the first Lego movie. Yeah, de definitely can tell that they got inspired, they were inspired by Don Bluth animation. So anyway, how our... the characters should look and behave. So anyway, our main protagonist is a boy named Fly. Fly. What are you looking at, Butthead? Um, yeah, even by I swear, even by two thousand, that phrase was um, really dated. So what's our plot actually? Like we we had the parents had babysitters, but they are terrible at their job. Well, basically they're having them be babysat by their aunt Anna, the fat woman, and her son Chuck, played by Aaron Paul. So That's... yeah, Jesse was a lot more chubby back in the day, and younger. Remember, this was like what? At least 15 years before Brave Bad, so he probably was like a teenager at this point. Eight years, so good. Oh, blue screen of that, magnificent. Oh, so you took away his computer just so you could cra make crash it for no reason. Okay, so our, so our protagonist is an asshole, okay. Ooh, floppies, the key to everything. Uh, it's okay though, he managed to save everything on a disc, thankfully. <laughs> I get the feeling that of course our protagonist is the, the cool key with an attitude. I get the feeling that Aunt Anna may have passed out from from some alcohol, but let's just say she fell asleep on the bed. So is there is there an actual reason why Fly here keeps um, you know screwing over the the Aaron Paul kid by uh, breaking his stuff? He's blackmailing him so that he'll let them go fishing. Okay, but here's the thing though. In order to blackmail someone, you need to threaten that you're gonna break shit, not break shit. Well, if you already broke the crap, then what? there's then there's. Well, no there was the where was no, no, the no. floppy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the no, flop. It, 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 
No, 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 no. Hey. Oh my god, you weren't kidding when they mentioned yeah. the Lion King. <laughs> yeah. Oh my no, god. Seriously? You will take okay. us to Sierra Lee. Okay, uh, what if, okay, I don't know if it's, it's gonna be a concept for the film, but I can tell already, this thing is going super fast. Yeah. Like, well, this movie is only one hour and and, uh, and not quarter. I, I know, but it, but okay, Good Times movie have a slower pace than this. Like, anyway, anyway, Pedro, no, the, um, the cinema release, right? Yeah, it did. Anyway, okay, I don't think I saw it in cinemas. Hmm. A can. Oh. With a seahorse in it. And you killed a seahorse. Okay. Do, we, do we really need to see the seahorse suffocate? Jesus Christ. Uh. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, it has to go back in the water or it'll suffocate. Yeah, all the more reason why you should take it from hers before the thing dies. And now it's time for the tearful goodbye. Really? <laughs> even though you've only known that for like a, a minute. We're barely 10 minutes in and we have, we have a set of scenes which will probably tell, require tell, the 10 tell, minutes. Tell, tell, you're okay. overreaching. We're not even 7 minutes in. Again, again, again. And we skip the logos. Again, you gotta love how that shot is so blatantly Lion King-esque. What? Wait, what's what? going what? on wait, now? Wait, how the hell did that happen? The uh, tides in. Yep. The, so, the, 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 the seahorse the... back to the sea somehow causes the ocean to get angry? Like, the moon is getting huge, I guess, to cause these, these shit. <laughs> Why, what? And, uh, what? Oh, there we go, I guess. What the fuck? Okay. He broke his neck. Like, how convenient the rules uh, of play uh, here. Uh, uh, sorry, he's one of those uh, fat design kids who don't have a neck. So he's fine. It's also. Oh, it's I, also... oh um, uh, guys, did you oh. think about the movie in regards to its American release? Yes. Mm -hmm. The film came out in Denmark and a few places in 2000. It, it took till 2001 to come to British shores, which, you know, fair enough, is common for these kinds of movies. Guess when it came to American shores? 2002? 2006. Oh, wow. wait, 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 wait. You mean, like, to theaters? At all. Huh. Well, yeah, it, it, nope. took, it took it took six years, and that's and that, and they, they even renamed the film a fish tale. But wait. that's the thing; it is already an English dub. Like they could have perfectly just copy pasted. So that. wait, wait, wait. So let me get this straight. So they they basically sent this film to theaters in most places except America, one of the biggest potential markets Whoa. here. Oh yeah, that's just a mouse fish. Of um, course. So. Uh, uh, okay, so they've bumped into a, an evil scientist lair. You like, do, 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 have do. no idea. Like Doctor Miro has decided so, to let me, you know let go let get, Oh, let me guess. It, it's not a Mephisto. Basically, He's more animals, more asses. No, 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 no. So <laughs> this is a doctor called Doctor Macrill. Ha. Ha, ha! ha! That's so clever, movie. Uh. Trust me. Well, then, then why don't then why don't you go? Bonk. Eh. No. Hey, steroids. Uh, hey, just sir. leave. Just leave these two assholes who do nothing but bad things to you. Uh, die, and you can go back and live a good life. There you go. Wait, yes, hold on. Right. But Pedro, they're his cousins. Also, Shiroi, subtle foreshadowing, eh? Fuck yes, that. I I notice. Like things are starting to come back to me now. Yeah. This is the oh. first time I've seen this movie, actually. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I saw all the hype and everything from the movie, and yet this is the first time I've seen it. It took 20 years. That's Terry Jones, Stella. I love how he goes from looking sinister to looking kind as soon as the lights go on. Classic Beatles, which... And before you ask Dio, no, he's not the villain. Despite the film suggesting such. Basically, this guy wants to solve a problem for global warming. <laughs> so, what's his solution? Uh, 
No, oh, I... so he's, uh, you, you should ask funding to all gore. He might actually help. No, 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 no. CTO, here's his solution. Turn everyone into fish. Of course. That's uh, that's like a plan that Namor the Submariner would go No, 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 no. Guys, 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 it's genius. Uh, what? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't you see? It's genius. It's like this. Guys, I know COVID's a problem. But I've realized that pets are immune to the co to the disease. So here's my solution: turn everyone into cats. Then we'll be immune to the COVID virus. But but Jova, we'll end up with the cats movie if we did that. No, because we'd all actually look like actual cats. I see That's that there's. That's so even worse. I see that there's no objection from Shiroi to that plan. I'm oh, basically please already don't tell me he's gonna sing. <laughs> no, please well, don't sing. Guys, guys, oh, no! guys, guys. Stop having well, Monty Python people singing in this animated movie. Guys, movies, guys, guys, well, like. Okay, okay, okay. Terry Jones can sing, to be fair. So. <laughs> That's the thing, Pedro. Every time it, it happens in one of these bad animated movies, it never works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who voiced. Wasn't there someone. It wasn't Eric Idle in that uh, in that in that um, what was Secret it? Secret of Neem sequel, yes. Yeah, Secret of Neem yeah. two, yeah. And he sung in that, didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's a thing. The, 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 the his song was the highlight of the movie, as far as I'm concerned. But, well, well, look, guys. When I said this movie was trying to be the next Lion King, I meant it in pretty much every way, shape, and form. That includes the Disney songs. But but none of Lion King's songs were techno based. Well, okay, okay, okay. Well, Dwibs, obviously is, the yeah. Help I'm a Fish song is for, you know, the pop song essentially, which Lion King sort of had okay, more like the Elton Johnson. Probably more the credits, so. Yeah, you know. It, it works because Help I'm a Fish is technically a song in universe. Like again, I think the most successful thing oh. I've done. <laughs> What the fuck? Honestly, I think the most successful thing about this movie was that song. So basically, he wants them to help him out with his experiment here. He'll test it on himself, he'll turn into a fish. So what happens if it doesn't work, like? Actually, Tio, he actually did think of something. Uh, Wait, hold just, on. It's just a prank, bro. Yeah, basically, in case the experiment goes wrong, he developed an antidote ahead of time. Oh, you mean the experiment that you just left unattended? Oh, sure, right. What could possibly go wrong from oh. leaving it unattended? I don't know. Ask the little girl in the background. Oh, I'm sure a little girl wouldn't just go and drink any random thing. That's not the Crystal Pepsi, sweetie. Whoa, 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 whoa! Apparently some crack cocaine was in that. That's the sound of your DNA structure being scrambled. Woo! <laughs> is the movie literally saying that, you know, doing this kind of thing, you know, is a blasphemy towards God or something? <laughs> like... I don't even... What? Well, she seems okay. Why did she even? She pull accidentally. That lever? Well, she was kind of uh, going comatose here, so she accidentally did it. Okay. I love all these sequences, uh, you know, complete, serves to establish pretty much the plot points that are going to be vital for the net for the rest of the movie. Oh, it gets better. Oh, she oh, turned hey, into look. a starfish. A, a starfish. Hey, has anyone seen Stella, by the way? What's this random starfish on the floor? Oh. Oh, I get it, because she's na- Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> it's not the only one, pay, um, Tio. <laughs> Yeah. Piranhas. Yeah, that's another good question. 
Doc. Wait, Doc, and here we go. <laughs> oh no. Yep. Yeet! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Congratulations, son! You just threw your sister out to sea! Well done. Oh, we didn't we, like smash cat to... to the wow, that was an incredibly abrupt transition. Oh, we immediately go for the fact that no, I'm gonna turn into a fish to rescue her. But wait, hold on! If you don't drink the antidote in 48 hours, you're stuck as a fish. Of course. But he's gotta do what he's gotta do, <laughs> and maybe you could have waited until you turned into a fish just in case it don't work. And look at that! He turns into a California fly fish, just like Boy, the- Boy, he keeps the hat for marketing purposes, probably. Not only that, you may remember how he ran into a plushie of a California fly fish. Hence why I mentioned to Shiroi, huh, foreshadowing. I mean, it's also like in the- oh, in the tie- in the actual, you know, posters and everything. Well, crud. Okay, is it me, or does it feel like the scene's missing? Wait, 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 wait. No shit, Dweebs. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course. Us. So, again, Dweebs, do you think this is one of Jesse's stories he's telling Walter? I tell you, Walter, my cousin turned his sister into a starfish and then yeeted her out into the ocean. And then I had to drink it myself and become a fish. Not just any uh -oh. fish. You high or something? Yeah, the, 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 twi the, the twist is out of nowhere. The twist okay. is that this was all a dream from the aunt. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? So basically, someone actually and pitched to cut. an <laughs> Okay, okay. So I guess that's it for that scene. Moving on. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, 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 Jesus! Yes, that's oh, a check. Uh, uh, what was the rating of these, just to know? Uh, Thank let me you. check. Okay, and now all the little kids have run away from the feeder uh, in, in fright, so that's nice. Um... Oh boy, here we go. Oh. So the antidote does the... Uh, what? The antidote can give animals... Uh... Sentience. Of course. Meet our villains, Joe and uh, an Australian shark played by David Bateson. Joe, this fish here, is played by Alan Rickman. Who looks like a fusion between Ryu, Keith Ledger's Joker, and Mr. Hyde. That's nice, I guess. So basically, the rock, so basically, the Rocky and Muggsy of this movie. Okay. Oh, this was Rated G. <laughs> yep. Like I, I also especially love how before turning, you know, being anthropomorphized, the, the shark, you know, eating something is represented very gruesomely. But the moment this happens, oh no, it's cartoonishly, it's fine. Don't worry. I could forget about it before. So now Alan Rickman's plan is to start leaking the stuff into the ocean so he can develop an army. So, I just want to point out something to you people here. The do Dr. McCrill has essentially created an the antidote hell? that can let animals talk and think and be ultra super smart. Uh... The parents, if you forgot, Pedro. Oh, <laughs> So call the police? I don't know. No, no. Of course, okay. of course. Okay, so okay, so here's the first problem. There's way too much shit going on in uh, at the same time in this movie. It's not even that, Pedro. It's the fact that it moves on way too fast for its own good. 
Congratulations, child. You're a starfish. Help! I'm a fish! That's the title of a movie. Just think of it like being in a big pond. <laughs> the music is a bit too whimsy. Right yeah, actually, I actually haven't checked yet who's the composer. Let but see. but is, yeah, is it like a Danish person or something? Let me see. Yeah, it's a Danish. Earlier in the credits, it showed a Danish name. But Soren yeah. Hildegard. Oh, he passed away in 2018. <laughs> But. but yes, believe it or not, Theo, this movie is rated G. Remember that. Oh, hey, Sasha. It's the seahorse she had to let go earlier. But now she can actually... Happen. That's thick seahorse. And now, she's, sure, now she's the right size to get to ride it. Wasn't that always your dream as a kid back then? Oh. No. Don't you remember me? Yeah, I think the seahorse is the right idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, the animation's gorgeous. Of the, all, the, like, the composer is trying a bit too hard. Like I said, the, C the CGI... <laughs> it might be fine a bit, especially for the time being it was done, but... like No, please, no. Oh, do we really have to? Cool. I knew I probably needed alcohol for this, but whatever. What was that you were saying earlier, Shiroi? Wait, what? Uh, you said something earlier, but we're cut up a bit. Oh, I said this is a musical. <laughs> Hooray! No, I think uh, I think uh, you were trying to imitate uh, the little girl's voice to, to say some kind of joke or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just said you almost murdered me. Yeah. Oh, It's okay, we're just fish trapped in the ocean. There's nothing to be sad about at all. Not uh, just that. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Why like do you have a? Why do you have your baseball cap? Yeah, why do you have your so skirt? It's so convenient that the po one thing that the potion does is shrink uh, particular types of clothing that the, the the subject tends to have. It's whatever the case of designers felt like looked better, I don't know. Again, for the purpose of marketing. <laughs> ah, this is fun! By the way, we have a 48-hour time limit or we're stuck like this for the rest of our lives. Well, maybe they should just live as fish, that way maybe the... Well, at least, at least the fly should, like, uh, that way he wouldn't be a bother to anyone. That'd be uh, of a fish. It doesn't remind uh, me of being yeah, a little... Um, what's the name of the little girl again? Stella. Stella! Hey, Stella! Sure, sure, sure. Oh, oh. Stella can go back. And look at Stella, that! Stella, Chuck grew... Stella... Look at that. Chuck became a jellyfish. I guess because he's spineless? I don't know. Stella, so Stella, Stella and the, the kid of crosses can go back, but uh, maybe we can let Fly uh, be here so that way he won't be a bother to anyone. Unless it we can be his replacement. Unless we were to give we him a replacement. Pedro, his parents are going to be worried sick. Well, sometimes bad things happen. It <laughs> happens. But Pedro, what if he were to have character development and become a better person? Hmm. Ah, uh, yes, because I'm expecting meaningful character development in a film called Help, I'm a Fish. It actually does get its character if development. Anything, if anything, believes it's going like the opposite direction. It's going through a checklist of character development. And yes, I know the film was called A Fish Tale, but Help, I'm a Fish is a better title. So. Like, the, the cousin will learn how to be more courageous, Tedla will be more, uh, be more responsible, and Flying will learn how to not to be a dickhead. I'm, I'm, already expect, I'm already expecting the, the party breakup at the two-third mark, mind you. Not sure about the party breakup, but you pretty much called their character developments. But yeah, we've got a problem. We have to find the antidote somewhere in this vast ocean. 
However, it seems that someone's been spreading the antidote around because suddenly fish are becoming more like people. So, if I understood correctly, we abandoned the global warming part of the story at well, this point? Well, okay, 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 to be fair, Paige, the whole global warming thing, that was just set up for the reason that the scientists created mm -hmm. the potion. So basically, the scientist was just a means to an end. How nice. Wait, 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 what were you expecting, honestly? I don't know, I expected the plot to be a bit more cleverly written, but then again, I guess I'm I'm expecting too much from this movie, I guess. Let, let me actually see uh, who were I the mean, writer of the movie, so. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, okay, if you're worried that the scientist won't factor much into the plot, don't worry, he'll be back as well. Oh, oh, look, oh, look, Tail, it's just like in Final Fantasy VIII. They, um, I was uh, about to mention instead said Shark Tail. Well, yeah, but it's because of the number eight. Maybe every but, fish buzz is the number 88. <laughs> but anyway, four writers of these. I wonder if it was like two Danish and the other two were, I guess, like Irish that, you know, were responsible for the English localization. Wait, is it just me or does that fish have a, a bottle uh, a, a bottle? A bottle cap. In, a, bottle, yes. a, bottle, a bottle cap in his head. Yeah. So in this short time span, for the sake of comedy, presume you already develop a co an economy. Well, <laughs> well, again to you, again to you. The reason for that is because the antidote's been spread out amongst the fish, causing them to essentially become people. I have and a I, question. And, and of course, so becoming people means you become a victim of the, you know the last of capitalism. Of <laughs> Oh god, does this mean the fishes are going to go to war eventually? Um, yes. Sorry, anyway, yes, Pedro? Why the, would the fish need glasses? Well, okay, to be fair, the reason the potion let him keep the glasses is because I'm convinced that Dr. Oh, Mac why? What? What's wrong? Why? They were literally picking from the gills. That, that, this is horrible. Basically, Get it? That, it's because it's like a buzz. Also, hey, Titanic. Like, if yeah. you watch the boys, you will probably know that, uh, you, like, that touching, you know, or interfering with the gills of a fish is, like, the worst thing that can happen to the poor fucker. But don't you see, Tio, the antidote has made him more human-like, so now he's okay with it, because he's okay with being used as a bus now. I, uh, uh, this movie's kind of crazy. And it cannot end fast enough. <laughs> Tio, 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 we're only 20 minutes. Tio, we're only 27 minutes in. Buckle up, boys, because well, we're... Okay, I will see the half full of a glass. Huh? We're almost all the way through. Yeah, there's a, there's, Still there's taking probably... the bus. Maybe go get an alcohol break. Hey, this mostly, I this get it. So far, it's mostly just stupid. Oh, hey, Orwellian uh, imagery there. Of course. So again, uh, again, in this short amount oh, of time, so... we didn't manage to do this. Uh, okay. So dystopian. No fish is allowed. Don't you see? Alan Rickman plays someone who's obsessed with potions that will... Wait a minute. <laughs> of course. Okay. Before the first Harry Potter movie, right? Yes. Huh. Yep. Yeah, technically. Uh, Philosopher's Stone, I think, was 2001. <laughs> Again, the composer is trying a bit too hard. It's, it, it's like in Remember Me. The music, uh, the music feels like it's being composed for a completely different uh, work of fiction. Uh, which, which Remember Me? <laughs> the game that we did. Was... Oh, I thought you were talking about the movie. With which we did and to lives. Um, turn to page uh, something, turn I guess. Page 390. You know, I'll admit, even though it's Alan Rickman playing Joe, he sounds like someone else, honestly. He sounds like a... He sounds more like a younger Jeremy Irons, honestly. The era of the pilot fish. 
Oh no! <laughs> Why are you having Alan Rickman sing? Oh. Well, Alan, Alan Rickman. Hey, hey, hey! Alan Rickman, hey, hey. Alan Rickman, Alan Rickman can, can sing. sing. I think the the big problem is not so much the fact that they're singing; it's more so the fact that the songs are terrible. Okay, you ready to see how crazy this antidote potion can get? It literally is bringing sardines back to life right out of the can. Of course. So basically, this thing is the fish Jesus juice. You, you see what Dr. McCrow is creating, guys? Uh, like, you have to wonder, is he secretly the bad guy? Like, honestly, apply this to humans. Can this antidote now bring the dead back to life? I'm pretty sure this shit is how Splatoon started. Oh my god. Okay, I, I wouldn't be too surprised. Oh my god! It it actually makes sense! Yeah, somebody, I mean, yeah that's what happened. Someone at the Nintendo World saw this movie and thought, hmm... Again, the lore of Splatoon is not too dissimilar in, in terms of that. Humans essentially destroyed themselves, the aquatic life became sentient. And then took over the ruins, so why not? And considering what this antidote will do, because trust me, you still have not seen the full extent of what that of what these potions can do, it gets pretty crazy and yeah, I can easily see inklings being created from the antidote potion. Oh my god. Fly, get off the stage. <laughs> He's trying to... the cane. Yeah, if you drink it now, you would drown. Yeah. Uh... Well, that's the movie. Oh. Oh. Well, that was that was helped by the fish. Uh, what your final thoughts? Well, at, at, at least the villain was considered to not kill them on the spot. I guess. Well, oh, well, that's because he sees opportunity. They might know where he can get or make more of the antidote. Seriously, though, Alan Rickman here sounds more like Jeremy Irons, like... It's so odd. <laughs> Slip to me your secrets, Potter. Potter? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this I, I guy, really don't get why giving the shark a guy who a voice hit, man. Yes, like yes, I, Dwibs, it is. Like I said, it's the classic. I think he did voice hit man at this point. Like I said, it's the classic Rocky and Muxy uh, dynamic. Routine. Yeah, I get it, but why giving him an Australian accent? Don't get it. I guess that was closer to David Bateson's accent because he was South African English born. Of course. Macro. Uh, but, but please don't show close up. Thank you. <laughs> also, the the quantity of the antidote changed in between shots. It was yeah, already... it's it's so inconsistent. <laughs> How did he snap his? Never mind. Not even. You cool. can't snap. You can't do a finger snap if you don't have fingers. Which is, again, kind of an odd thing because later, well, let's just say he would have been able to do it later at a later point, but they didn't choose that point. Like, I'm pretty oh, sure we... so, so basically, oh, no, so... basically, if they don't tell him, he'll send Sasha off to the work camp. That's right! <laughs> a freaking work camp! 
And Again, in the in the span of these little oh, time, we managed to develop the these nineteen eighty four esque society. Not no. just that. Hold on, hold on. How the hell does he know that they care about Sasha? Oh well, because Stella's been cuddling Sasha the whole time around him. Oh, oops. Oh, you survived it. Oh yeah, like I said, he'll come back into the plot. So, Doctor McCrew, you have essentially created God in a potion, and you're wasting it on fish. And not just that; it's getting so out of control that the entire marine population is probably, you know, gonna revolt against you. Is this like a prequel to that well, Simpsons episode where the dolphins, you know, can well, fight against the humans? While we're at it, uh, how did you even get all the funding, and how did you even figure out how to uh, achieve this in the first? Pedro, place? Pedro, well, Pedro, it, it's like Doctor, it's like the Jackal, Doctor Miles Warren. Well, okay. He just manages to have all these little secret labs where he can oh, do whatever he wants. So here's the stupid thing: you want to know what his potion is made of? Just bits and bodily fluids from fish. Yeah, he mentioned that in this song. My Okay, I will admit, I do actually like this bit. This is kind of clever. Basically, he's going to go for the typical, Hey, let's try and trick the guard into showing off his strength by busting us out. Yeah. Yeah, turns out, nope. Nah, instead he's gonna test his strength out by breaking the key. Brilliant. I mean, I'll admit that. Never mind if I, never mind if I have another animation error. Is the fact that much like much like in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, they the bars are, are large the enough bar. for them to yeah. <laughs> But anyway, okay, essentially, the post Also, okay, for a sec, yeah, the, the telephone cord for a couple of shots looked like an actual hanging noose. Um, symbolism? Oh my god, she's a Karen. Oh no. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> It's, also, it's also that, that thing that is also especially noticeable in stuff like the Iron Giant on Dog Blue movies where the parents actually look relatively decent, but stuff like, for example, the aunt instead of a more gonk esque appearance for sake of comedy. Well, you know what? Give them credit, they at least did call the police. But yeah. I hope that they even have a fucking statue already. Like, this thing is going out of control so fast. Uh, like, Boy, you remember that great time? Great migration. Hey, sure. Remember that time when Severus Snape became the dictator of the Briny Blue? That was. Uh, oh yeah. Interesting that, that's time. A, that's a very interesting bit that only people who read the books would know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, essentially, the potion that turns people into fish is made from fish parts and bodily fluids. So, by that logic here, a seafood special would turn you into a fish. Because it's just made from bits of fish and nothing else mentioned. How does that work? I don't I know. Like the, I feel like the movie's not really making any, any particular use of its dark uh, setting and themes. Well, Pedro, it's rated G, remember? Oh, snap. Yeah, it can't be. What, what? It can't go that extreme. Oh, oh. That's the thing. Like, in that case, why even have this pre this the kind of premise that would fit a a a, a, a more mature movie? Much more like a, it's like it's like if I made a movie about the Holocaust. Okay, but it, it would just show the non-violent parts of it. Like, a, it, oh, there's the Holocaust going on, but we're actually doing this in another country while it's going on. Okay, like, I will give this movie credit. It does later take advantage of its more darker setting to do some pretty gruesome stuff regarding it. So there is that. But I, I, I kind of agree on a whole of thing with Pedro in a sense that even if it's if it's very it's kind of inconsistent. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, okay, I'll admit. Like I said, I think this movie is a good nostalgia piece so far because the animation does still hold up. And the music as well. Yeah, the score anyway. The songs... Well, the, score, the, score, the, score is, it, the score is decent, it's just that it, it very rarely fits Dang, what's how long is that line to have reached all the way from no there resistant. to the shore? <laughs> You know, uh, Stella should be able to go for the bars just fine. 
Again, technically any of them could fit through the bars, but that may just be an animation error, who knows. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. But the key's broken. How are they going to use it at this point? Well, technically, the half that's needed to unlock stuff is fine. I guess. Thank you. I think we told. Did we really need that scene? <laughs> like, hey, I don't know. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We hired Alan Rickman. We're going to use Alan Rickman. Okay, but use them for a scene that makes some kind of point. This will be great for the video game they're probably never going to make. I can see why, why I can see why this is regarded. Uh, I can see what some people call the mock busters of Finding Nemo. Because remember, it came out in America after Finding Nemo, so <laughs> the, that's probably where the comparisons come from. Probably, it definitely does Ooh. feel a lot like a prototype for Finding Nemo. We're free! <laughs> oh crap! Dun, 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 yeah, dun, not dun, really. <laughs> You know, maybe you could have grabbed the antidote out of his Yeah, was about to mention. No, too convenient. Wonder how many of the people who were involved in the voice acting for the film actually even remember being in it. Probably not. You'll be surprised by, you know, how many celebrities and voice actors like have roles of that. Oh, a lot of people might, might remember or not. Like Mark Hamill, by his own words, Mark Hamill doesn't even remember that he voiced the Goro Majima in the, in the first Yakuza game. Yeah. Not, too. He also, uh, there's also Christopher Lloyd who doesn't even remember Suburban Commando. Really? No, no, no. He didn't. He didn't remember. It was only until the um, the Forza Today meme came about that he. Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> because basically, hmm? okay. Yeah, basically, the first time he was told of it was when the Nostalgia Critic made that thing where he had him say on camera, yeah, "I was Forza Today." Like he mentioned, like, "Oh, did you remember your all in Serban Commando?" And he said, "No, I do not." Hey, so basically, it was because of the whole meme thing that he remembered. Hey, Tio, yes, despite it being more cartoon, you gotta love how we're literally seeing living characters be devoured alive by the shark. Okay. You know, for a kid's film, you sure say the words dead and die a lot in this, honestly. Um, it because it's not a Native American production, Jova. Europe, like like we mentioned, Europe has this thing where stuff like, you know, the, the, the minor tier swear words or, you know, saying death or die okay. is actually a lot of things. So, basically, their plan is to make Antidote. How do they know this? Well, believe it or not, because Fly remembers the professor's song from earlier about the ingredients. Okay. No. I'm sure that, I'm sure no. this will not backfire in the slightest. Don't you see though, guys? The songs actually serve a purpose in this. It doesn't mean the songs are good though. <laughs> 
the meantime, so basically, wait, wait, wait. Guy... what does believing in love have to do with the current situation? It's a powerful the friendship, guys. No, it's not. <laughs> so basically, Doctor Insano here is just gonna spend the rest of the movie just uh, rolling around at random and not being able to find them. Okay. Wow, like the song is so generic uh, that it has nothing to do with anything. Um, okay. Yeah, the song is really not fitting for that. Was, was not none, of the music, none, none of the music is. Even the score, which is decent, uh, it's way too jolly. Oh. Good work, team. Complete with a rap number and everything. All right. Well, that happened. Moving on. Two thirds in. Oh guys. my god, this is literally a cycle animation well, from the previous well, shot. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Shiro. Honestly, to me, I'm just kind of. Well, this is just a. This feels like a generic bad. Just a generic bad movie. Like it's not even. Particularly like, look at me wrong. I guess. I guess movie. I'd rather watch these over stuff like Leo the Lion 2014, but uh, you know. Yeah, no, that movie painful. is the only thing I remember. <laughs> no, Leo was painful. This is just. Yeah, well, it's a movie that. Uh, I mean, there's a. Oh my God! Parallels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, the overall, the overall evil uh, fish uh, revolt thing is an interesting concept. The problem is that the movie doesn't take advantage of it in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's the thing, Pedro. Technically, that is the main plot we are contending with, since that's the antagonist. Also, plot. also, yeah, but, but it's just, but it's just about these kids getting away. <laughs> But so also what like is the parallel the fact that the Alan Rigman's fish is supposed to be essentially the fly having to, you know, get over the hatred for his parents or something? No, it's sure he... been two days at this point. No, no, no. no. It, ha it, it hasn't quite been two days because if it had already been two days, then the protagonist would be trapped as fishes. This is illegal, you know. I'd say that she's overreacting, but to be fair, as far as she knows, her son could be dead, so I guess some aggression I, is... The uh... father is, surpri is surprisingly actually very, you know, polite for the situation. Okay, I'll take that back. <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> Jesus! It's like, it's, uh, okay. Oh my well, the god! The professor is getting... Oh. Yeah. And she's gonna faint again. To be fair, if you just saw your kid... Parallels! Get... <laughs> okay. Stop with this parallels. Uh, help, help, I'm a parallel. Oh, no, 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 that's the thing too. Okay, it's a parallel, okay, but so what? It has no meaning. It doesn't mean anything, it's just a like, parallel. We, we, were, we, we did Watchmen a couple of weeks ago. Like, in, in the, the original comic of that, the parallel in terms of, you know, something falling, wearing a shot identical to the other, had an incredible meaning because the narration was complimenting and telling something that was akin to what the parallel was supposed to be. Here... That's the same pose. We can cut to that. <laughs> so, so basically, we've only got a half an hour left, or we're trapped as fish. That's also, just that. here's another problem: the complete lack of character development, like uh, relationship development, because uh, these ki these kids have yet to have any meaningful uh, character moments that actually, you know, flush them out in any meaningful way. Not uh, like, just that. Uh, sorry, sorry, go on. Like they're just. I mean, they're, they're still in the exact same spot character-wise than they were when the movie began. Well, there have been some slight changes for Fly's character, oh, but oh, yeah, when it comes to... Dude! Oh, okay, they're trying to... Are you not seeing that huge fucking thing right there? What are you talking about, Sir Roy? We're a-okay, okie dokie. Yeah, that's just a rock, okay. <laughs> But uh, now that's that's another thing that I that I noticed uh, again. Ever since it has been he has been turned into into the jellyfish form, you know, um, Aaron Paul's character never you know demonstrated the fact that the tentacles are supposed to be you know uh, 
yeah, stinging, like. Okay. Well, they're dead. Or maybe not. But, oh. Okay, I, I, I guess the, I guess this, I guess the octopus changed his mind. Uh, apparently, what? apparently something scared him off. But it's okay because the ink is just what we needed for the potion. Okay. Um, in regards to oh, the hello title, there. and that's why the octopus the ran off. In regards to the title song of the movie, it has three different versions. A um, the original one done by okay, all three were done by Danish uh, girl groups. One done the original done by Little Trees, another one done by Creamy, and another one called K Three. They did a Dutch version. A Dutch version of what? Part of part of of the of the theme song because part of Belgium is Dutch speaking. So they're literally going fishing for their kids. One by one. Yeah. To be fair, how would you react if, if a loved one of yours had been turned into a fish because some guy wanted to solve global warming? Again, problem? I'm calling the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would have called the police on this guy. He has endangered children, all for the sake of trying to solve the problem with global warming. Oh. Okay, now he has fingers. So then would have been a time to have him snap. Well, the, the, the more he drinks, the more you money becomes. Well, yeah, that's pretty much how the antidote works. That's your lesson, Fly! <laughs> Again, this guy will later go on to be Hitman freaking Agent 47, guys. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Uh, you know, that's the funny thing. The uh, the first Hitman video game came out one year before this film hit US shores. Sorry, <laughs> okay, any shore outside of Britain, but six years before the US. Wow. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, sorry. Any shore outside of Belgium, I should say. Or Denmark, or whatever. Also, I know that we were trying, we were trying to convey, also in the, in the previous shots, uh, the fact that the the crabs are supposed to have like a machine, but they clearly look like something else. <laughs> Okay. Uh. Well, Craig. Okay. Oh. Okay. We needed the red filter for this, I guess. Oh, well, that's... Ooh, a dramatic moment. Oh, uh, well, blood. Okay. Yep, that's right. He is now going to be leaking blood for the rest of the movie. Ha Wait, really? Wait, is, is, is the Grand Leader now the, the actual final boss or something? Well, now he's a rival. If he if he's gonna... How the hell is he gonna do that for the time movie and not die? Well, maybe if we wrap him up in something. That said, though, yeah, Fly is literally dying now. Yes, yeah, Stella, it's, uh, your brother's just having a tummy ache. <laughs> These brothers scratch, literally. Look, the way he's curly, Goofy's just having a tummy ache. He ate too many shrimp. He's gonna be fine. Um, is this an all tummy ache skill? Honestly, Sheree, that's one thing I'm wondering. Is this movie implying that if we eat too much shrimp, we'll become fish as well? 
Uh, the last thing I know, Jova, is that your skin turned pink or something. I mean, that's what the song. What the fuck? I don't know. Like, imagine, if she, imagine if she grew up to be like a gangster or something. She points a gun at you, and then she's like, If you don't give me the okay. drug money, I'll give you a Ram tummy ache. Okay, thank you, Random Whirlpool, for saving us. There, um, actually, there actually is a reason why this Whirlpool is happening. You'll see. It was written in the script. Oh, there he goes. Oh. See, it turns out that they were sucking up all the fists there. That's right, he created a suction so f powerful it can create an underwater tornado. Enough to suck up uh, a freaking great white shark. Of course. Oh, he's literally that's feeling cold. Hard. He's literally feeling cold, guys. That's a good sign. I don't know if this movie rated G considering that bloody scene from earlier. <laughs> You'd be surprised what will Like you said be before, it's... No, 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 that would be enough to make it PG. Like you said before, it's so inconsistent. Miss rated you around here. You have to wonder, did they actually pay extra to convince the MPAA to rate this G overseas? Oh, here's the other incorporation, the fact that all tubes are connected to the... But now, place, uh... but now Chuck's about to learn that sometimes you need to take risks. That's I right. Mean, I get... Chuck's about to get his spine, guys. I mean, I get, I get that, uh, I get that Disney was able to convince them to rate Hunchback G, but well, Disney, of course. But how the hell were these guys uh, able to convince the again, NBA? <laughs> again, Pedro, maybe part of the budget was uh, dedicated towards uh, convincing them. Huh. Whoa. No, please. Well, at least and we're not having a, a song when he dies or something. But, okay. That, I don't know what happened, Fly. We cut to black for some reason and now we're here. Yeah, that's another thing. A couple of times the movie cuts to black only to have the next scene show up. Like, without any reason for that. Now? You know, now if, now, if you recall earlier, the professor mentioned how the the switch that Stella hit activated the pump that pumps seawater mm -hmm. towards his animals. And, and you mentioned that all the tubes are all connected like that. So Chuck's logic is, well, go for broke and take a ride in. You know, considering the fact that he was injured, like supposedly mortally injured uh, a while ago, he still seems to be relatively fine. Well, that's because Chuck found a way to seal up his wound, keep him sealed up in a bag. That way, the blood can still flow around and keep him alive for the time being. And now, um, and see, <laughs> like, like, yeah. look, kids moving all, but uh, that's that's and, not how it works. And now, and now <laughs> Stella has to learn her lesson that she can't always get everything in life. She has to say goodbye to Sasha, again, again, again. They know that she can be human or something. So why? Yeah, why? Why not anthropomorphizing her? You know, the the seahorse. Because the seahorse belongs here. We, because you? we need, the, like, an animal-esque mascot. Got it. But guys, what would Sasha do as a human? The music. <laughs> Way too sappy. Actually, you know what? Come to think about it, how would Sasha react as a human? Would she even get clothes when she's turned into a human? Would she turn into an adult and she's apparently a more full-grown seahorse or something? I don't want to know Jova, to be honest. That's the thing, Tio. This movie makes you ask questions with these potions. Like, seriously, I kid yeah, you this... not, this scientist man has gone way, way too again, far. This... Again, the scene has no impact because the movie barely focused on these two. Well, technically, we saw loads of scenes of Stella chillaxing with Sasha and all that. Like, if there's one thing that was obvious, she loved that seahorse. Well, yeah, but... but well, yeah, but it has to be... but. Uh, I get that she loves the seahorse, but we have to love it too for this thing to work. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's just not very well done. Goodbye, Mr. Seahorse. I, 
Wait, what was your name again? Sasha, Sasha. you named yeah. me. Uh, yeah, 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 bye, Sasha. Oh, boy. Look out! Crazy Alan Rickman fish! <laughs> so nothing new. No. <laughs> this week, and then why do we need this? And this then movie get... is weird with this editing. And then we'll find them. And then, and then they'll get chopped up into mackerel by that fan. Yeah, that's another thing. Considering how this thing is supposed to. <laughs> okay, oh. how powerful is that fork to stop a full-on undersea fan? You know what? No. Yeah. You uh, wanted to object to something, Shiroi? <sighs> oh no, the piranha tank. Of course. And then, Walter, I as a jellyfish had to fight the piranhas off to save my cousins. Jesse, what did they told you about, you know, taking the map before it's prepared? No, seriously, this one is true. I'm actually sober for once. Oh, there it is. <laughs> we get, get it. Should have been feeding in the wind. Shit. Oh, cried. Can per uh, I mean, use your jellyfish ability to go electrical or something. I and then, Walter, there I was, fighting them from the left, from the right, and I guess yeah, now no. it's stinging. By the way, uh, flies outside the bag pretty much at this point, so he should be dying. He is, but he's got to do one last desperate move. Yep. Okay. Hence my character development. Yeah. Wait, you have color. Okay. Not, you have yeah. color again. Yeah. Yeah. Totally buy this. What does that got to do with anything? Uh, okay. just, just wait for it. If mm. I had to guess, he's forcing him to drink enough to become human. Totally, I guess. Oh, I get it. I get it. Complete with bone and everything sticking out the back. Wait, oh my god! The formula was tightened this whole time from the Batman Arkham series? Kinda. The answer is the egg. I thought it was 42. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Oh, Alan Rickman ass. Well, By the way, yeah, he's dead. Happened. Drowned. Destroyed by facts and logic. <laughs> no, please. No, seriously, he just drowned. Time's almost Again, up. Again, though, you gotta love how this is for kids. Hey, kids, see Alan Rickman drown. Oh, yeah, and Fly is still dying. Thankfully, that antidote, I guess, can also cure all your wounds, too. However, that works. Okay, seriously. I have a 
All right. Oh, I have, a, I have a question. Okay, so the data will turn him back into a, into a human, but there's still the wound there. Or, well, the, or, the, or, the, or does the antidote to also magically heal his wounds? Well, remember, Pedro, we saw the antidote bring dead fish back to life, so... Maybe. I guess, yeah. And thank goodness it gives your clothes back, too. Yeah, it's so convenient. Oh, but fly, you're still a fish. Only did fly stay a fish, he's also dead. <laughs> that would be tragic. Well, I guess, Peter, you got your wish in the end, I guess. I guess so. How do you feel? Uh, well, I'm at the very least glad that to, uh, that kid paid for his shit. Oh well. That happened. I guess Fly has to die. Oh well, shit happens. I mean, even if he turned back into a human, wouldn't he still have the wound? No, because oh, magic. Oh yeah. Damn, the music and everything sounds so Lion King. Not just that, these two, let's say again, yet another scene that the movie doesn't earn. You see, sir, your son died as a fish, but he saved us from a revolution of fish that was going to take over the world. And you can blame That's that scientist thing. for everything! That's the thing, they might not have a leader anymore, but a lot of fish, a lot of creatures are still anthropomorphized under there. We yeah. still kind of have a problem going on. Yeah, they'll be fine. What? Damn, Aaron Paul's really bringing out the acting for this. Oh. Okay, now he's gone insane. Well, More to be fair, anything, I guess, so. to be fair, how would you feel if you saw your cousin turn into a fish and die, Dwibs? Well, consider it. Well, the oh, okay. The... Oh, she just stepped oh, yeah, on yeah, him. Guess, <laughs> well, okay, now, he, now he definitely <laughs> dies. Oh, oh. Well, shoot. What are you going to say, Pager? Hold on. Oh, it was the prop. Ha, 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 ha. Still, though, oh, I mean, the little the girl thought then. her brother had just been crushed. Yeah, uh, therapy? Free orders of therapy? No! Like, seriously, these kids were turned into fishes. Wait, can't, wait, you... How did you fall for that? Well, you see, Dwibs, the way that it was animated was that it actually looked like an actual fish. So all as well as well. Deception. Oh, wait, no, wait, he still has a limp, so he's not completely healed. I thought he was injured in the stomach, our part. I guess that transfers to the leg now that he's bigger. You earned this cat for some reason. Wow, we just nearly died. Let's have some fun near the ocean again. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing, Joe, but this is one of those bad movies where the main problem is that... Also, God... the father is ripped. Yeah. See, he, see, here's the primary problem with this movie, Zitrova. Nothing was got resolved because there was never actually anything to resolve. The writers just put up a house of cards only to immediately topple it back down again. Again, look, mm -hmm. all he's got... Would you cast fly? Yeah. <laughs> Why have you got your laptop up there? You're just asking for trouble. See, see, if this movie had balls like how they train your dragon, they would have uh, Fly uh, be without one leg. But hey, now we can have fun, and seriously, that scientist should be put in jail. <laughs> So I guess, or at least, or at least the FBI should be on his ass for having such a powerful also, thing. Also, 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 guys, also, guys, you may notice how Stella was literally in her uh, in her regular outfit, but now she's in her swimsuit. Hey, Sasha's back. Ooh. How adorable. Oh, is the payoff really that we're gonna turn Sasha into a human? Yeah, let's use more You're of this cool? antidote. Nothing more could go wrong from this. What? I, uh... Watch. The antidote oh. turns Sasha into a horse! 
Wait, I, what? I, I guess, uh, uh, is the movie over yet? Even though it's turned <laughs> everyone else into a human, it turns See, her into a horse. Anyway, here's that, that song. That is an abomination, and I must shoot it down. Little, uh, little crime against God. <laughs> oh, and there's the goddamn earworm, little yellow fish. Well, I, I, guess, I guess at the very least, this did not use the the twist of it was really all just a dream or beyond. Oh like, no, that would be just goddamn terrible if they did. So yeah, I remember this song, because this song was played on the radio a lot when it yep. first- Wait, Tabitha St. Germain was in this movie? Yeah, she was second fish waiting for bus. That memorable character. Hey, look at that, Shiroi Rarity was in this movie. Hooray. Also, I guess we're really not going to resolve the problem with that, but uh, basically half of the sea population under the lab is anthropomorphized now. Eh, yeah, it's right. fine. I mean, look, dude, only one fish became a maniacal dictator. Oh my god, this really is the prequel to Shark Tale, and I, 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 I <laughs> so don't Oh my god, it. oh my god, oh my god, you're right, because there's a sentient shark left over. He'll go on to later become head of the reef, essentially. So this is the lead-in to not only Finding Nemo in Splatoon, but Shark Tale as well. Oh, man. It, like, <laughs> if I had to guess, there's no post credit scene, right? No. Ah, uh, there may be. Fly will not be invited to whatever Danish initiative may, may be. Yeah, so that is, like I said earlier, there's no way in hell we're gonna get help I'm still a fish. But seriously Please though, that. seriously though, this song in particular got a heck ton of marketing. It actually got two different music videos, like... Okay, even, um, sorry, go on, sorry. Like, even Let It Go only got one music video, but this, this got two official ones. Okay, um, since I haven't watched it, I have to ask a question general to not any more specific of you since you actually the guys did watch it. You watch uh, Romeo and Julia and Seal with a Kiss. Since, you know, similar, you know, potential themes and all, compared to that, how is this? this I will take this over because uh, that movie with the Romeo and Julia, this, that movie is genuinely uncomfortable to watch because of how... Let me put uh, it like the... this, Tio. Do you like what looks like preteens going at it like they're full-grown adults? And by that, I do mean sexually. Oh, great. Whereas this movie... This movie's not even that. This movie's just a generic bad kids movie, really. Also, also, while Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss does have fantastic animation because, you know, Phil Nibbling and all... the animator. I do feel like this one still has better animation because... Romeo and Juliet sailed with a kiss was Phil Nimbling literally all on his own. So there were some design animations that may have gone better if he had someone to tell him, yeah, Phil, maybe no. One, two, three, four. Only five people for the CG animation? Jesus. Huh. Uh. Anyway, but, uh, but, uh, anyway. I know faults, I guess. Well, okay, I will say this though, Tio. When we eventually do do a Generations of it, I'll make sure to include you and Shuri because that movie is something special, as Pedro and Dweeb saw. Goody. Which movie, sorry? Romeo, Romeo and Juliet and sealed with oh, a that, kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie is generally uncomfortable to watch, too. So, uh, this movie's not uncomfortable to watch. The movie's just. Uh, like you're just watching a movie that just doesn't know what the hell it's doing. It's like it's like watching a drunk try to <laughs> try to do his taxes. Like he's completely drunk off his ass, so he obviously he's in no position to do so. I'll admit, so he's, so, so he's just gonna get nowhere. I'll basically. admit, I kind of do feel a bit sorry for the movie. You can definitely tell that they were trying per se. Like, and they do go to some serious elements, like literally having the villain drown himself. On screen. <laughs> so, who so, wants to go first? Again, final thoughts, sir. Who wants to, to you? Uh, can I go first? Oh, Dweebs, no, Dweebs, go, Dweebs, go ahead. ahead. Uh, so, yeah, after all these after all these years of uh, remembering all the marketing hype for this movie, I finally got to watch it. And it was, as the production company calls it, it's called a movie. Well, technically, the company is called A Film, but yeah. Yeah, it's A Film, then. <laughs> it's just... I mean, it's... it's it, the, the most remarkable thing about this film is that there's nothing remarkable about it. 
Yeah, the base, I mean, the animation's fine, but nothing, but that's just about it. It's just a generic, you get turned into an animal and they have to, uh, re reform as a family or some shit. And it's not even that good at it. Mm-hmm. Oh! And, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, okay, props to the uh, Danish film community for pinning their hopes on this to break out. But I'm pretty sure there were a lot of other better Danish things that um, could have benefited from this. And maybe did come, maybe did get some um, positives from, from future I, ones, but, I, but this one isn't it. I guess if I can give them credit, they have a better child actress in this movie than the child actress who plays the goldfish in Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss. Well, I mean, that's the thing, Joe, but weren't a lot of those people, friends and family of the director? Oh, yeah, the goldfish was literally Phil Nibbling's shining, bright little daughter who gets her own song number and everything. Oh, it no. went about as well as you can imagine. I can't remember, actually, because could she sing? I'm gonna let you... No, no, no. It's, it's not even worth leaving you in suspense. She could not. I get what Phil Nibbleek was trying to go for, but she could not. And I recall it tormented your ears when we commented on it the first time. I look forward to how Shireen Tia will react to it when we get to it a second time. Joyful. Yeah, so yeah, overall, help I'm a fish. Uh, oh! Yeah, no, no, it's, not, it's not very good. Also, I was a bit mistaken. While the production, while the production company behind the number "Help I'm a Fish" the song, aka Little Yellow Fish, was 18s, the actual band that did it was a band called Little Trees. Okay. Anything else, Twibs? That's it. Uh, no, uh, that, that's it. That's the four. Pedro. Uh, yeah, Pedro. Uh, well, that uh, was a thing. I also, guess. I love uh, how these credits even credit their legal advisors. <laughs> Please don't sue us for having a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> we swear, we made this movie before a little Finding Nemo, okay? Apparently. Oh, um... oh, 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 and apparently the government of Ireland helped finance this movie. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though. Um, that's the thing, though. They didn't even... In terms of the US release, it wasn't even to compete with Finding Nemo, it was to try and leech off Shark Tale. Well, th that's again the thing, Twibs. This was technically out before Shark Tale. Well, no, no well, in the US it came out It came out uh, two years after Shark Tale. True, yeah, and they called it Fish Tale. Yeah, I mean, I mean what next? Are we going to have another sequel to Kung Fu Panda? But then some, but then, but then another animation studio makes a film called uh, Kung, 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 Kung Fu Lion. In case you're wondering, the title of the knockoff was The Little Panda. Uh, fighter. Yeah, but course. anyway, go on, Pedro. Again, like I said, this movie is not even all that uh, bad. Like, again, it's bad. It's a bad movie. It doesn't really succeed at anything in particular. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not really uh nah not really it's just a generic bad as far as i'm concerned this is just a generic forgettable bad movie that's basically it like it doesn't know what the hell it's doing it has no idea what kind of message it's trying to get across or the implications or not really it's just and then like i said this movie's just a bunch of random things nothing yes there's stuff happening but there's no actual narrative theme to tie it all together the movie doesn't have a message it doesn't have any kind of proper themes explore it has an idea for a dark uh setting premise i but it doesn't really take advantage of it at all except for maybe i guess the the bits where the the alan rickman dies by turning himself into a human and the the whole bloody thing but that's but even because of the fact that the rest of the movie doesn't do anything it just comes across as jarring so whatever again like i said this is one of those rare cases of a bad movie that Again, nothing got resolved because no, there was nothing to resolve in the first place. The writers just build up a house of cards, and then, pff, there. Top of the back down again. Don't you see? Everything's fine now that we're human, and again, somehow the antidote turns a seahorse into a horse uh, instead a horse, of a so. human. And like Pedro that, said, that thing's an abomination that needs to be put down. Nothing, <laughs> nothing turned her into a horse. I thought they were going to turn her into a dog. 
I thought we were going to turn into a human because that's you know that was the consistency that happened until that point. Well, they said they altered the formula for Sasha, so... Great! So now we have to explain to everyone who comes by our house, why do you have a mutant horse? Why do you have a green horse with a mohawk? Can you imagine if the government found out about all this? I guess that the FBI should be on the axis of that scientist. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh continue Pedro, sorry. Uh yeah, um like I said, like uh, nothing happens. Like the characters are in, in, in are basically in the same place they were uh when the movie started. Nothing actually developed or or, or progressed, nothing. No, you literally think of the nothing. Cast? This was this was literally nothing but pointless bickering. The cast is fine considering the the crap script they have to work with, yeah. Why do I get the feeling Alan Rickman didn't include this on his resume? (laughs) Well, you see, uh, before I became the professor of potions at Hogwarts, I was actually an evil fish that wanted to take over... something. Yeah, seriously. He wanted to take over the the sea, I don't know. Like, like, okay, yeah, sorry, go on, sorry. The point is, yeah, this movie is just a generic bad movie. It's not even all that interesting to watch, to be honest. Like, like uh, I'm I, I, not. I, I at the very least know what all the fuss is about. But to be perfectly honest, I don't even know why there's even a fuss to begin with. Because... This is a movie that definitely is remembered for the big, and I do mean the big hype behind it around the time, the absolute audacity that, and at the time, unknown company was in trying to well put their own hat into the ring of such. Also because of the cast being very well known, well, okay, mainly Aaron Paul, David Bates, and Terry Jones, and Alan Rickman, but you get the point overall. Oh yeah, and Scott McNeil. Let's not forget he was in this too. Well, Scott, Scott McNeil is more, more like a vocabulary, actually, more than anything. I was expecting it to be something like, say, you know, the, either the Sharks and Coding Command or the Crab that was more anthropomorphic, like... Nah, 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 he just played the sea bass. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I do get why the film was sort of big. And by big, I don't mean at the box office because, damn, it didn't even make half its budget back. But because of everything surrounding it, and again, that one song, Little Yellow Fish, which was stuck in the memories of many as a child. Mm-hmm. But I'll get more into that later with my final thoughts. Uh, anything else, Pedro? Not really. Again, as someone who wasn't even aware that this movie existed until recently, this is just like seriously the the that that, that that's kind of the problem, I guess. Like uh, for people, now that the now that it's been years after the hype, there's nothing th- this movie that's remarkable. I don't really see a need to watch this movie again. I guess not that I would mind necessarily, oh. but it's just that. It's just that you know, like this movie isn't even an interesting train wreck. It's not really. It's just a very generic bad movie that doesn't really do anything noteworthy, even in terms of pissing me off or in terms of just making me laugh. It's just kind of, well, that was that wasn't very good, and that's basically it. Carry on. Okay, I guess I'll go next then. Yeah, I think I see this movie as essentially Nostalgia City. It definitely harkens back to an older time here. And I guess if you want a good time capsule film to remind you of a time when 2D hand-drawn animation was more prevalent, then yeah, it does that. Because like I said, the animation does still hold up overall. The score is definitely given effort, as is the acting. The problems mainly go into the story, and yeah, there's a lot of... There, there's a lot that is implied with what's going on, but unfortunately... The film does not go to the great lengths to explore it all fully, which I do think is the biggest problem with this. Like, essentially, you have a miracle fantasy concept, yet it feels like the film doesn't do nearly as much as it could have with it. That, I do think, is the film's biggest issue here. Like, they definitely do push the envelope of what they'll allow in a kid's film, so... I'll give them that. It, 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 It does not feel like it talks down to kids. Unfortunately, that doesn't automatically mean that the message is good either, because, like others have said, while there is technically character development, it's not exactly handled the best either. 
That said, I will admit, I could see myself coming back looking at this just for, you know, okay, I need to kill an hour or so, maybe show some friends here and there, because, again, I think that this movie can get pretty kooky and crazy. Definitely not as kooky and crazy as other stuff we've seen on the show, but it's definitely something that you can make drinking games out of. In fact, there actually are drinking games for this movie. I really do regret really? letting alcohol for this, to be honest. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, sure. Roy, I'll post you the link for that. But yeah, there are in oh, fact okay. drink. Yeah, there are in fact drinking games for this uh, one. Mm. But uh... Uh, I think the main issue with this movie is that again, if you didn't grow up during the time it was being hyped. You, oh and, yeah, uh, you, you definitely you, you would know, probably it... not know about this. No, no, not just that. Like, uh, if you just watch it like completely, let's just say you found it randomly on Netflix or something like that. Like, really, I was like, on Prime this case. Or, or whatever. The point is, yeah, if you just watch this at random without even knowing what it is, like completely blind, is it would be all the more problem. I, mean, I get the feeling this movie is just it, the only way I can possibly enjoy it is for nostalgia's sake. And since I have no nostalgia, I have literally nothing to hold on to with this thing. I feel like maybe as a kid, you might get enough enjoyment out of this. It has your typical free act structure for kids' films. So, and I don't mean this in a sense like, well, oh, kids can take this. No, I mean, this legit does feel like a movie that I could see entertaining kids just fine. And again, it helps that it doesn't talk down to them. Like, it is pretty much upfront with stuff overall, so fine enough. That being said, as soon as you pretty much become older than, I'd say, 11, 12, and 13 at the very least, this is mainly just meant to be something for nostalgia at best, because, yeah, for a movie that talks such a big game, it did not have much to say. Don't get me wrong, I sure get a kick out of seeing freaking Severus Snape as a psychotic Joker fish who wants to kill everyone, but the movie only does so much with that. That and his absolute metal way to go out, drinking himself into being a human and letting logic catch up with him and realizing, oh crap, I can't breathe. Like, that was almost Looney Tunes, is how what finishes him off is him realizing that he can't breathe. But yeah, okay, seriously though, the scientist though. This all starts because he's trying to think up an insane solution to global warming. Turn everyone into fish, and he ends up creating stuff that could probably make people freaking immortal if he put enough I mean, it, into it's, it. It's it's like what Linkara said in I forgot which which review. I think it was like the wrong perspective. Sure, instead of in this case a final solution to prevent you know the atmosphere to overheating, let's completely rewrite the way human DNA works. <laughs> that works too. Like seriously, again, not only can that potion turn people into fish, the antidote variant can turn fish into humans or I guess horses and can give them super intelligence that makes them evil or psychotic not only that it can revive the dead I repeat it can literally pull a phoenix down god rejuvenation and revival reincarnate whatever have you and bring the dead back to life that is flipping scary, and yet the film just has it as a passing bit in a music number. Oh yeah, that's right, there are music numbers in this Ugh, movie. Yeah, they are. Uh, they range from fine, okay, to the goddamn earworm that is Help I'm a Fish, aka Little Yellow Fish, which I will admit, guilty pleasure for me. I kind of do like that tune, but again, y y you are... Yeah? I was looking at the um, wiki earlier for um, uh, for the single. It's on iTunes, so have at it. Oh, joy! <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Again, I think the most... I'm actually surprised. <laughs> Again, I think the most successful thing about this movie was the song, Help, I'm a Fish. Like, congratulations, Little Trees, even though I think you may have broken up as a band quite some time ago. You will probably be the most remembered thing about the project that was Help, I'm a Fish. Or Fishtail. I mean, overall... Yeah, they... Yeah, they 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 only existed for like one one year. Wow! So you're telling me that the band that created the most memorable thing about this movie broke up in one year? 
Yeah, although yeah. one of its one of its members went on to uh, went on to uh, be in such highly acclaimed films as Street Dance 3D. <laughs> oh. oh, you know, anyway. yeah. Overall, this movie is an interesting avenue of history here. It's it, again. I won't deny, part of me does feel a bit sorry for this movie. It was fighting against the tide of a lot of movies, and, well, the fact that it got brought to America in 2006 in the middle of the transitional period of animation could not have made things easier for it. It definitely does feel like it was trying, which is more than I can say for some films that absolutely don't feel like it. That said, though, trying is not enough. You need to actually turn out something good. And what they turned out was... Mm, it's basic at best. It's a mess yeah. at worst. And even as a mess, I will argue there are far more fun to watch messes, to be honest. Like Book of Eric, now that's an incredibly enjoyable mess. Hey, this, hey, 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 hey. Eh. You gotta admit, Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss was an interesting uh, mess. No, 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 Romeo and Juliet is, in, is more interesting to watch. It's also much uncomfortable to watch. It's basically, it's one of those cases where, okay, if you're willing to settle with some, settle with some in, uncomfortable stuff, there's also some interesting stuff to riff on, but this, eh, this is just... Again, it it's easily something you can put on for the kids without making them feel like you're punishing them, so have at it, parents, if you remember this from the early 2000s. Yeah, I think, I think the ad campaign is more memorable. Though. All I know is that it will linger forever in my memory, unless I go insane and forget it. Okay, okay. You're already insane. You anyway, Tio, you go next. Yep. Sure. Daisy is just ah, oh, like I, it, it's one of those movies that really felt longer than it needs to be. But at the same time, it go it went way too fast for its own good. So, what was your favorite um, part? Okay, can I can I you can I make a joke and say the credits? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I mean, technically, no, okay. the credits. Okay, okay. I don't want to be too mean. The 2D animation is perfectly fine. This is probably one of those movies that if I watched as a kid, I would probably mistake it for a Don Bluth movie, much like I did with uh, We're Back for Dinosaurs in New York mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. Um, but, okay, I will say this. So the CGI blends well. Uh, the what's the name? Uh, the, the it again it reminds me also of the Titan E, but again, the CGI blending with the 2D animation in that one, I argue, was a bit worse than this, uh, mostly because it was more like proudly presenting. This seems to be more, you know, uh, masked for lack of a better term. It's because the CGI will... is used more to show what feels more was... outlandish to the characters. In the I sense. will say this, uh, I will say this for the um, for the plot. Uh, I wasn't actually expecting the 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 actual actual fishes to turn anthropomorphic thanks to the antidote, you know, and then gaining sentience. I was actually the movie to be lazy enough for them to find the fishes already anthropomorphized, and the reason why we talk with each other is because the protagonists are fishes. So at oh, the very gosh. least, the movie kind of plays a bit more with its concepts rather than going for a long and improve it. And on the same note, well. I guess on one other thing that I was wrong, there wasn't any second act yeah. breakup at the very least. But again, <laughs> if the movie was a bit longer, we probably would have done it. So, who knows? The characters, the characters, like, it's like Peter, we really don't go through anything. The, the closest one we get is, uh, you know, um... Chuck? Oof. Sorry? Chuck? I, no, I guess yeah. The the um, Aaron Paul's character, yeah, who, Chuck, he learns to who fight learns things. actually to be more courageous, but everyone else not really. Well, don't you, know, you see, Tio Fly learned how to think with his head and be nicer, and Stella not learned really. that she can't have everything. Except you, you, you still can, so which <laughs> completely validates whatever we were going. But don't for. you see, Tio, if in order to have everything, you have to pervert Mother Nature like they did, so. 
This kind of, the, the, the kind of, this is the kind of, the double plan that the scientists concocted in front of, you know, this feels something out of a Superman, uh, Silver Age comic. Uh, well, you know. well, Tio, the professor is called Professor Macro. He's essentially yeah, a comic, it, it, he's overall, essentially a comic really does feel like... in the making. But, nah, it's okay, because he helps save the kids that he indirectly endangered. No and he need to report... becomes friendly with their families. Like... <laughs> no need to report him to the police or anything. <laughs> Danish government you need to work a bit better on this um, <laughs> but uh, no the, the songs are all terrible for me the, the, the closest but it's more salvageable is the villain song without a rigman you know saying uh, uh, that he is a sermon it's only presented like he's a televangelist uh, when you get down to it um, but that's that's still not really good for me uh, all the songs are pretty much terrible like he just said uh, the score itself is fine on its own but it like it, it it's one of those scores that tries to carry the movie on its back and fails me <laughs> kind of miserably at it it's kind of like lost in space uh, lost in space movie oh, um yeah but uh the voice acting is actually fine that's the probably the thing that i've already into a dimension that i will give to the movie it's all right you know um it's it's very interesting. It's one of another cases where it's interesting to hear in this case a celebrity who is more well known today in a different light. In this case, Aaron Paul with a much younger voice um, than the one you're used to, especially if you're a fan of Breaking Bad. Um, but no, other than that, the, the proper problems I already mentioned. The pace goes way too fast. Um, there are still so many things unresolved by the end of the movie that we just forget what happened. You know, um, and not to mention there are a couple of animation error like we also mentioned but uh, so no this movie might have a few good things but overall it's just unsavageable but on a note on a side note uh, i mistook this movie for something else i still remember seeing the marketing of this movie and a, and a water trailer when it was marketed in my country but i was confused with another type of movie that has a similar premise that is however i think in 3d anime like in cgi animation um i don't know actually what it's called but i remember that one was even worse than this really so, yes I, I forgot the title so who knows but that's really much it for me like it's whatever shiroi please close us out <laughs> uh can't wait to get to the alcohol huh Yes, I can't. <laughs> tomorrow. I will, I will do it tomorrow. Since oh, I'm a okay. part here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, this, not seen it in years. Didn't miss much. That song was an earworm. Yes. And that's kind of the point of all the songs. Is that, you know, they're supposed to get stuck in your children's heads. Um, Which I'm most sure of the time, do. the characters... Yep, it did. Most of the characters are just whiny. I mean, the acting the acting is pretty alright. The animation's good. Um, especially for, you know... I mean, it had a decent budget, but, you know, for, like, the kind of movie that this was trying to be. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. This, this was a movie. How great was it to come back to this movie? Not bad. It just well, that was a thing. I'm actually more. I'm actually more surprised we managed to get through the entirety of this without making a single Rick and Morty reference. Too easy. I guess. See you for whatever we do next. See ya. See ya. See ya.